Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem 2552 that is count increasing quadruplets from leaf code. This is a hard problem, however I will be trying to explain a much easier solution to this. The problem states that given a zero index integer array nums of size n containing all the numbers from 1 to n, return the number of increasing quadruplets. A quadruplet basically is a set of four numbers. So let's say the uh, indices are i, j, k and l of the four numbers that are present in this quadruplet. So it's increasing if i is less than j is less than k is less than l is less than n and numbers of uh, the value at i is less than the value at k is less than the value at j is less than the value of l. Now this is an interesting inequality that makes the problem more interesting and difficult to solve. Over here you will be using dp to solve the problem. So let's get started with the solution itself. So let's say this is the inequality I'm having or let's firstly talk about the quadruplet. So this is i, j, k, l right the inequality i'm trying to satisfy is the i uh, nums of i is less than nums of k is less than nums of j is less than nums of l now this is tough to solve so let's try to break down this further so i want to find two numbers that is nums of k is less than nums of j right such that the indices are arranged in such a fashion that j is less than k that is easy right after that what i am saying is that since i want to find all the quadruplets so i can say that i'll try to find all pos uh, for this particular pair find all possible i's and also all possible l's right and when you are able to find all the possibilities for l and the, all the possibilities for i you can multiply that so possibilities for i multiplied by possibilities for l you can store this in a result variable right or you can add it to the result variable now if you're able to find all the possible pairs kj and you do this particular operation for this then your answer would definitely be correct i hope that is making sense and that is easy to understand as well now the way of calculating all the possible pairs is pretty easy you just have to run two for loops from let's say for the first for loop you can run from like j is equal to 0 to um, maybe n minus 1 the other for loop you can run from k is equal to j plus 1 to n minus 1 then you have to satisfy that uh, nums of college for the writing but nums of k needs to be less than nums of j then you have to find possibilities for i then find possibilities for l then you have to multiply it to the result pos i and pos l that is easy right but how do we find possibilities for i and possibilities for l and that's where a dp kicks in so what we can say is that since for this particular index so let's say for nums j what i basically want to find out is or let's say nums k right that would make more sense so for nums k i want to find out all the possibilities for i so for Okay, for nums k, uh, what are the possibilities for i? So the possibilities of our i are all elements in range 0 to j, obviously, right, because the, the element is uh, we are considering is j and i has to be less than j. So, all the elements in the range 0 to j, which are less than nums i oh sorry nums k i hope that makes sense and that's easy to understand what about uh, the possibilities for l so for nums j the possibilities for l would be all elements in range now l should be coming after k right so all the elements in the range k plus 1 or k plus 1 to n minus 1 over here you can actually say to j minus 1 right although it won't make any uh, any difference because it's a permutation and the numbers would be distinct but still just to make the logic more clear so all the uh, numbers in the range k plus 1 to n minus 1 which are greater than nums j so these are two things i want to find out so all the elements in the range 0 to j minus 1 which are uh, less than nums k and all the elements in the range uh, in the range k plus 1 to n minus 1 
which are greater than nums j and all the elements in the range uh, 0 to j minus 1 which are less than nums k i hope that is pretty clear right if it's not clear you can rewind the video and try to understand it now how do we calculate it so it's pretty easy to un uh, calculate so this is something really standard and i hope you know this but still i'll be explaining that so for that uh, for this i'll be uh, creating two vectors or two do, uh, two dp arrays i'll be creating two 2d arrays let's say cool so what these would contain is that one of the vectors would be greater than the other vector would be less than lesser than or less than whatever you want to call it so greater than or gt ij let's call it the two indices ij would be the number of elements in range i okay range i to j correct in i uh, in the range i to j which are greater than i and less than i j would be the number of elements in range i to j which are less than j itself now why so what they can give us so let's say i want to calculate the number of elements in range 0 to j which are less than k so this would basically mean that uh, so this can be computed by the vector that is containing the lesser than elements so lesser than from the range 0 to uh, to you can say k right minus less than 0 to l so sorry 0 to j so this would be elements that are less than uh, k in the range 0 to uh, 0 to k right okay sorry over here j to k so this would be the elements that are less than k in the, in the range 0 to k and these are the elements that are less than k in the range 0 to j so this is the let's say this is j this is k this is 0 so firstly you will be getting these many elements from this right and then jk actually defines this right so you will be subtracting these value at the end you will be having the elements that are less than k in 0 to j and these elements can actually form the possible i's now same thing would be done for the possibilities for l so i'll be explaining that in the code itself let's try that out so what i'm doing over here is that i'm cre uh, creating two vectors so this is one of the vector is greater than the other vector is less than right after that i'm populating it now this is a very standard code uh, you probably would be able to understand it yourself i'm not i'm not explaining this right now but still if you have a doubt you can let me know i'll then explain it after that what i'm saying is that the, uh, i'll run two loops now i want to find all the pairs from uh, that would be jk right all the pairs jk now the starting index for j has to be one because before that at least one element should be that that would be the possibility for i obviously so i'll start my uh, like j at, uh, like uh, the least value for j should be one right and the max value uh, for j should be n minus two because after j there should be two elements that are k, uh, k and l also also my k can range from uh, j plus 1 to n minus 1 that's cool after that what i'm saying is if my numbers of uh, if the value at j is greater than the value at k that is something that i require in order to satisfy the inequality then i'll con uh, create the uh, create the values possibility i so the possibilities for i is basically the numbers that are greater than uh, that are less than k in the range 0 to j so that's what i'm calculating over here okay possibility for l are all the numbers that are uh, greater than you can say j in the range k, k to n minus 1 right so that's what i'm calculating over here i hope that's uh, understandable after that i'll be multiplying that with them and i'll be storing that in my result variable let's try to uh, submit the solution cool so you can say uh, see this is a valid solution it passes although the runtime complexity is not that great uh, but I can try to resubmit it again. Let's see if it remains the same. Yep, it remains the same. But previously I submitted the same solution with a better runtime complexity. It's something with the lead code and the solution is perfectly fine. It's going to pass anyway. So cool, that was it for the video. If you want to like reduce the uh, runtime complexity by some constant factor, you can use a, a, like a array instead of a vector that would actually incre uh, 
make your solution better because the constant time complexity for a vector is actually greater than a, like a, a, you can say a array so one, that's one thing you can do also there are other solution to it that are less intuitive but are better in terms of space complexity so there are some solutions that i that will use uh, order of n space complexity and would do it still so you can do, use those also but the main motive for this video was to explain to you the most intuitive solution cool with that i guess the video is complete thanks a lot for watching this if you have any doubts you can let me know in the comment section below bye bye